While we wait for the slides to set up, uh, one of the delegates was speaking to me a while ago and said uh, too many lectures in too short a time. Uh, unfortunate but true. We just have two days and there is so much information to disseminate, so a series of short lectures uh, becomes inevitable. Uh, before I begin, I also want to uh, allude to what Dr. Bala had said earlier. For upper limb blocks, he said it is for surgical anesthesia, whereas for lower limb blocks, it is for surgical analgesia. I'd beg to differ here, uh, especially off late because of uh, uh, so much of emphasis on preventive cardiology. And uh, I have only 10 minutes? I have only 10 minutes? Um, because of the cardiologist's uh, emphasis on preventive cardiology and uh, their love for antiplatelet agents, uh, very often it becomes uh, uh, quite difficult to do a neuraxial block. You don't have time to stop uh, uh, ecosprin and clopidogrel for a week. And uh, to make matters worse for us, uh, they have come up with a third antiplatelet agent, which is silostazole, which also needs to be stopped for three days prior to doing uh, surgery. So. Um, there is definitely a resurgence in the way lower limb blocks are uh, being performed. And uh, Ashit has uh, spoken very well about the anatomy, the indications, the drugs, the doses that you need to use, and the uh, advantages and disadvantages with each of these blocks. So I will not go into detail with that. Uh, coming to the femoral nerve, uh, this is of interest. You see that the femoral nerve enters the thigh just beneath the inguinal ligament. And once it crosses the inguinal ligament and enters the thigh, it quickly arborizes into many branches. So the point of interest when you do an ultrasound-guided femoral nerve block is to get the femoral nerve before it has begun to branch. Because once it has branched, it becomes very difficult to get all the branches. So when you apply the ultrasound probe uh, just at the inguinal crease like this in short axis, this is what you will see. I mean, Ashit uh, spoke to you about this. Medial most are the lymphatics, then you have the femoral vein, then you have the artery, and lateral to the artery is the femoral nerve. Uh, what is important to note, as he mentioned, is that the femoral nerve is separated from the artery by the fascia iliaca. So you have to do two pops, one to get past the fascia lata, and two to get past the fascia iliaca, and that is when you actually make contact with the femoral nerve. So if you scan for a femoral nerve, this is what you will see. That's the huge compressible femoral vein. That's the artery. That's the fascia lata on top. This is the fascia iliaca there. And this is the femoral nerve. It is not a round structure, but it's actually a stretched out structure there. So that is the femoral nerve. Uh, is that an aberrantly placed uh, femoral nerve? It's actually an inguinal lymph node. So as you can see here, there is a local anesthetic around the inguinal lymph node. And there are no prizes for guessing that if you deposit local anesthetic around a lymph node, your block is definitely bound to fail. The saphenous nerve is the continuation of the posterior branch of the femoral nerve. And as all of you know, a saphenous nerve is purely sensory. And it innervates the medial aspect of the knee and the medial aspect of the leg beneath the knee joint. And um, when you do a saphenous block with ultrasound, you do it actually just proximal to the knee joint in the medial compartment of the thigh. You will see the vastus medialis muscle. And where the vastus ends, you see the sartorius and gracilis taking off. And that is the saphenous nerve. At this area, what happens is the femoral artery has exited the adductor canal, and it branches into two. The smaller branch is the descending genicular artery, whereas the larger branch continues downwards as the popliteal artery. Uh, so this is uh, how you apply the probe, proximal to the knee in the medial compartment of the thigh. And this is the short axis, and the needle is going in plane. And uh, saphenous nerve block is a very good block to do for knee joint uh, arthroscopies. Because when you do a femoral block, you will always have a quadriceps palsy, and you will not be able to mobilize the patient in the post-op period till the palsy wears off. 
Whereas when you do a saphenous block, because it's purely sensory, it gives you good analgesia, yeah, but it does not affect the motor component. So this is how you would uh, scan for a saphenous nerve. That is the femur. That is the vastus medialis. This is where the vastus medialis ends, and that is where the sartorius takes off. Look here for the vessels. Uh, you will see a larger popliteal artery beneath and a smaller descending genicular artery above. And just on top of that, that would be the saphenous nerve. If you use a peripheral nerve stimulator, sometimes you do get a twitch. And that cannot be the saphenous nerve. That is the nerve to vastus medialis, which lies in very close proximity to the saphenous nerve. So if you get a twitch and you inject, you will invariably also anesthetize the saphenous nerve. The sciatic nerve is the largest and longest peripheral nerve in the body. But then um, Dr. Vincent Chan, who is a pioneer in ultrasound-guided nerve blocks, and uh, he practices in the University of Toronto in Canada, he's classified ultrasound-guided blocks into advanced, intermediate, and basic. Sciatic gluteal is advanced. Sciatic anterior is advanced. These two blocks are definitely not for beginners. Sciatic subgluteal is an intermediate level block. Sciatic popliteal is basic. And the tibial nerve at the ankle is again a basic block. Uh, let us look at uh, the gluteal sciatic. This is the huge bulk of the gluteus maximus muscle. And that is the sciatic nerve, which is actually crushed under the gluteus. So it is more like a lip-shaped structure. It is sitting on the superior gemellus muscle. This is the ischial bone, which goes medially as the ischial spine. And these are the pudendal vessels. So if you see here, this is the ischial bone there. That's the huge bulk of the gluteus maximus muscle. And that is the nerve. Very often, it is very difficult to pick up the sciatic nerve at this uh, particular level. Because uh, Bala was alluding to the fact that uh, when you are looking at a nerve, you always have an artery or a bone in proximity. Here, there is no artery that actually guides you to the particular nerve. So here, you really don't know initially whether you're imaging or imagining. So sciatic block at the gluteal level is definitely not for beginners. And when you do try to do it, always make sure you use a peripheral nerve stimulator as well. So that is how you uh, put a curved transducer, because this is a deep block, and you need your ultrasound rays to penetrate. And your needle can either go in plane or out of plane. Uh, the anterior sciatic block uh, can be facilitated with the use of ultrasound. And as uh, Ashit said, it is useful in patients uh, who cannot be put in lateral position or in prone position. Uh, so this is the lesser trochanter. And you can see the nerve passing just beneath the lesser trochanter. So you apply a curved transducer about 8 centimeters distal to the inguinal crease. And your needle goes either in plane or out of plane. <coughs> So this is what you will see. You will see the lesser trochanter, a bulk of the adductor magnus muscle on top, and deep down is the gluteus maximus. And that in between these two, that is the sciatic nerve, which lies lateral to the lesser trochanter. So this is, again, an advanced level block and definitely not for beginners. The sciatic subgluteal block, here the sciatic nerve is uh, rather superficial, not as deep as it is with the gluteal uh, block. Uh, you can see the greater trochanter there, the ischial tuberosity there, and lying in between the two, this sort of hammock sort of appearance, that is the sciatic nerve there. It lies under the bulk of the gluteus maximus muscle. Three minutes, please. And you apply the curved transducer here. This is short axis, and the needle is going out of plane. You can also go in plane, depending on what you're comfortable with doing. Uh, popliteal sciatic block, um, Ashit again spoke to you. This is a patient lying in prone position. And this is the linear transducer, because this is a fairly superficial block, which is applied uh, proximal to the popliteal crease. Your needle can go either in plane or out of plane. You can also do this uh, block in a patient who is lying supine with the leg flexed at the hip and the knee. You hold the ultrasound transducer this way, 
and the needle goes in this way at a fair distance from the transducer, but then you have to make sure, as Dr. Kapil said, the aligning between the ultrasound beam and the needle is always there so that you can see the needle. Uh, I'll just show you how you can quickly scan for a sciatic nerve. That is the femur, that's the popliteal vessel, and sitting on top is the sciatic nerve. And as you scan distally, you will see that the sciatic nerve begins to split into the smaller peroneal and the larger tibial nerve. It has split there. That is the peroneal, and this is the tibial nerve. With ultrasound, there have been a lot of uh, questions of where to actually block the sciatic nerve. Is it before it branches or is it after it branches? Uh, most people uh, now say that just when it begins to branch, you put the knee there in between and then inject your local anesthetic so that the local anesthetic coats both the branches of the sciatic nerve. Um, finally, uh, the tibial nerve at the ankle, this is the medial malleolus there, that is the posterior tibial artery, and lying right next to that would be your posterior tibial nerve. I mean, you might ask, why do you need to use ultrasound for an ankle block, isn't it overkill? There are some indications for ultrasound at uh, the ankle. Uh, there are some times where you have a lot of cellulitis which spreads well above the ankle. And uh, there are patients in whom there is severe peripheral vascular disease and you cannot actually palpate the pulsations of the posterior tibial artery. And in such instances, an ultrasound is very useful to pick up the tibial nerve at the ankle. Uh, this is how you use the transducer. You place it in uh, short axis. The needle always uh, goes out of plane. That way it's much easier. So in conclusion, I'll just uh, leave you with uh, uh, this uh, video of uh, a block. This is the sciatic subgluteal nerve there. This is the greater trochanter. That is the ischial tuberosity. The needle is coming out of plane and the needle is almost on top of the nerve over there. And as I begin the injection, you will see the local anesthetic spreading here and the nerve being displaced downwards. Yes? Once the local anesthetic is placed, the nerve is actually better defined. Thank you very much.